Welcome here folks, I'm Quaxo and today we're gonna talk about the dangers in my heart anime series or the Japanese title Boku no Kokoro no Yaba Yats. I wanted to talk about the series for a longer time but I was not sure how to go about it so I will try to make it flow a bit and I will try to cover everything I want to talk about the series what I like about it and what I dislike about it my overall thoughts? Beware, it will have some minor spoilers, but nothing major. I'll start talking about what the series is about. The Dangers in My Heart is a romantic comedy focusing on the story of Kyotaro Ichikawa and Anna Yamada. The setting of the story is in the middle school, realistically that is one of the parts of the show that does not sit too well with me. Still, that's the really rough outline of the story. So after you have the rough outline, I want to dive into the character settings in the animated series. First, we have our male lead, Kyotaro Ichikawa, who I will refer as Kyotaro. Our little guy Kyotaro may look from the outside like a shy, reserved and gloomy boy, but deep within lies an urge to kill. Or so we are told. In reality, he just likes to dwell into his inner heart, where he can fantasize about killing people to relieve his annoyances. I mean, we all had it talked about someone at the very least once. Whenever the driver who slows down the traffic or the crazy one who overtakes you on some real dangerous parts of the road, where at least he's self-aware. <laughs> one of the people he fantasizes about is Anna Yamada. Being Kyotaro's classmate who is arguably the prettiest girl in school and the magazine model to boot, being the center of the class and having good relationships with her classmates, Yamada finds herself noticing Kyotaro's occasional gazes. One day when Yamada is enjoying her secret snack time in the school library, Kyotaro stumbles onto the scene. Thinking of it being the perfect time to offer off, he prepares his box cutter. Just to notice that after snacking, she starts to do the class project clumsily writing straight up with the marker without doing the pencil pre-work she messes up a bit on the project. Seeing how even the title cannot even fit in one line, and noticing she forgotten her box cutter, Kyoto got a change of heart and lends her his box cutter. After noticing Yamada packs the cutter away after the work is done, he finds the cutter the next day at his desk. Noticing how Yamada knew which desk was his, Kyoto was a bit happy inside. After that, Kyodoro tried to make Yamada happy on more occasions, like when her project was not chosen to represent the group, cause her groupmate chose to rework it, I mean, using chocolates much as a part of the project, misaligned text and some more faults, it was inevitable. Being sad about it, Kyotaro tries to have the focus on him when he notices Yamada is crying after the presentation. Well, he did get the attention of the class, but not of Yamada. After that there was a bit at the shop where Yamada wanted to sign someone's magazine where she is featured which failed in a comedic fashion as they did not even know who Yamada is. Noticing Yamada's disappointment, Kyoto buys a magazine and goes home. And the episode ends with Kyoto straight up totaling his bicycle by flinging it down the road. Just so Yamada does not exchange her contact information with an older kid who tries to hit on her. At the same time humoring Yamada about the incident by saying he pressed on the accelerator and not the brakes on a mistake. That would warp up the character settings with the plot of the first episode. As you heard, the themes and settings are centered mostly around the main couple. Their awkward baby steps in their relationships are complemented by the gradual growth of their closeness and the revelation of the feelings they hold to each other. Sometimes the signs they send to each other gets missed and other times it goes straight to the center of the problem. Slowly but surely they grow more fond of each other. From Yamada giving Kyotaro snack wraps to giving him not only wrappers but even the contents. A cute wholesome romance complemented strongly with the individual official soundtracks, the music and the effects are brilliantly placed to elevate the whole series to a whole other level. As for the opening and ending sequences of both seasons, they are setting the mood for the show and adding even more atmosphere to the series as a whole. There is no dissonance with the type of feel the songs give. 
like there are some shows, yes Freerun, I'm looking at you, cause the first opening Yusha of the anime series Freerun Beyond the Journey's End, even if the song Stand Alone is really good but it does not feel tailored for the series. For example the ending song of Freerun is a whole other matter, it fits the theme perfectly so the song Anytime Anywhere is a great fit, that's one of the examples I have. While I'm at the theme of the ending songs, I really like how they made the best moments happen right at the end of the episode and listing them by Karte, in German Kart. For example, Karte 1, I was stolen away. Those little cinematographic touches made the series even more compelling to me. But I can't just sing praises. I do have some little problems with the series, for example I understand that they want to make the story pure, but making the main cast to be 13 years old can be at times awkward like in the show Tokyo Revengers, it can feel sometimes out of place. At times even more so if Yamada is having modeling gigs for a while now. I know that there are child models out there, still the setting for having a low at 13 is a bit, you know, feels a bit early. I do understand that if the author gone with them being 16 then it would lose a lot of the innocence the series has, so I am conflicted about this point. But it would be possible. Another example is Kyoto's Urges. He has them for the first few episodes and after that they are just replaced by making him creepy at times. I do like how Kyoto ended up at the current stage but the portrayal had some flaws. But that is the whole extent of the flaws which did not sit well with me. Overall the series has a lot more pros than cons and even the cons are really minor ones. Just like the characters slowly fell in love with each other I fell in love with the series more and more. At the end of the first season this anime was for me a solid 8 of the 10 show, and after watching the ongoing season 2 I fell in love even deeper. Right now the show has cemented its position at 9 out of 10, and the only reason being is that the show is not finished. A lot of times it just happens that the show does not deserve the 10 points with just one season. Still, it's just my imaginary scale, which can be flipped and is flipped at times. Reason being most of the shows that I have 10 out of 10 are unfinished. This season of anime is really strong, with Shangri-La Frontier scratching the tip of the scale holding hands with the dangers of my heart and one other series onto which I will make a video a bit later. So, the final questions. Do I recommend the dangers in my heart? Yes, I do. It's one of the best romances in the last decade, easily being the top 10 of many people. It is a must watch for people who like to watch the romances and love stories. The only reason someone won't like this show is probably the setting, cause the school life setting can get a bit stale if you watch hundreds upon hundreds of shows. Still, for me it is a great animated series to watch which I can easily recommend to anyone. Thank you for watching everyone. Wish you all stay in good health, press like and subscribe for more similar content. We're gonna see us in the next video. Bye!